All right, we got Mike, the Minnesota Vikings insider here. He knows more about Minnesota than Minnesota itself. So here's my first question for you, Mike. What is going on in Minnesota, and why are they 0-3 right now? This is just tough. I mean, I think, first of all, our biggest thing is the defense. We're really young in the secondary, which is – it's not helping anything. It's, we're getting exposed a lot. I mean, I see what we were trying to do, bringing in Njaku. We'll have Hunter and Njaku. That's not even how you pronounce it, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. If you get some pressure on the quarterback, it's going to help. It'll make it easier on that young secondary. We got Mike Hughes who's on year three. Holton Hill who's on year three. And then we got Danzler and Gladney we just picked up in the draft. So we're super young. And without the preseason, you know, there's just – it's tough for those kids. Exactly. And With uh, pretty, Danielle Hunter out, that's really putting pressure on Naguku, is if that's how you pronounce it. So, I mean, he's got to do extra time. But I think he's playing pretty decent so far. Yeah, I mean, he's not even happy with himself, and I think he's doing all right. He's got a fumble in the last two games. I mean, he's definitely giving it his all. But he's it. I mean, Pierce opted out too this year, so that line is all backups besides him. And, like, and Barr is out for the season, too. He was always putting some pressure on that quarterback. And now we got zero pressure, and they just sit back in their pocket and just watch for the rookies to make mistakes. Right. So now you got Mike Hughes. He's out, cornerback. And Cameron Nansler is out. So what's that's going to be even more taxing on that young secondary. Yeah. Well, I don't think Hughes played much last week. And uh, that Dansler, he's – Thinner than me. I don't know how that man can play in the NFL with 300 man, 300 pound men just smashing on him and expect to stay healthy. But you know, it's always got to be even a backup to the backup right about now. And we're giving up 34 points a game. That is just entirely too much. And Derrick Henry, well, we kind of contained him. I mean, he's going to do his thing, but still, can't even stop that. And the pass is going to be tough going for them. Right. So with your schedule coming up, you play Houston, and then you have the Seahawks, and then you have the Falcons. So what what are your prediction on these next three games? I mean, Texans are 0-3, but now they just signed Earl Thomas. So is that secondary, or I mean that offense, going to be able to play well enough to beat the Texans even? Well, you know, the first two weeks I was like, what are we doing? The Zimmer way is you run the ball, play action pass, go from there. The first two weeks we're just passing it all over the field, like where the Chiefs all of a sudden just didn't make any sense. Last, last week they went back to pounding the ground, got 181 rushing yards out of, out of uh, Cook, which opened up the play action. Jefferson had a beast game. First time in NFL history that a receiver had 175 yards and a running back had 175 yards. So that gave me some hope on the offense. So I think against Houston, their defense, a little, little sketchy too. They put a lot of pressure on Deshaun Watson. I think if we can just hold him back a little bit, there's a good chance we can pull that one out. I mean, Seattle's always going to be tough, though. I mean, there, it isn't the, the 13th man. But every year I feel like the Vikings are in Seattle going down to the wire and losing to Russell Wilson. because That's just what he does at the end of the game. He's just going to take it over. And, and I predicted a loss, time. actually. Yeah. It's a primetime yeah. game as well. Yeah. Yes. And then, there, yeah. That, then there's always that Kirk Cousins, you know. Like, sometimes I just wish he would do bad enough to just get at rid of. He's always just like, yeah, all right. Got to stick with him. We paid him a lot of money. Uh, damn it, is he good enough, though? Uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. Exactly. He's it. But he's not not it, you know. Right. He plays that that medium line very well. But I think if he can just st- keep it simple, stupid, and just hand it off, find his open receivers, distribute the ball like he did last week, I think we got a good chance of coming out at least three and three before the bye. Oh, really? That's a bold prediction. I mean, and then there's another thing: we only have one division loss, so there, there's still room to get in there to make a little playoff push. But so, 
need to think make... they can beat the Bears with Foles in there? Do you think Foles is a better quarterback than Trubisky? Is that a harder game now? Foles is more composed, that's for sure. He knows what he wants to do with the ball. Trubisky's a lot of uh, off his top of his head, and which is not working at all. <laughs> but I, I, the Bears always – they give us some trouble, but I'm, I'm always confident against them for some reason. They don't scare me. Packers sometimes, like, oh, shit, here comes the Rodgers. Excuse my language, but, yeah, it's tough against the Packers, that's for sure. And Rodgers is playing well this year. He's more comfortable than he's been in a couple of years, I believe. So that's going to be a real tough game. And yeah. Green Bay's got to go to Atlanta this week on Monday night. So Atlanta's 0-3. That could be their first win if they play well, but I don't I don't see it happening. I think Green Bay will go 4-0. I believe Minnesota should get their first win here against the Texans. But you just never know. That's why game is not played on paper. That's the truth, huh? So well, Falcons too are choke artists, so you might have they some. are. They are. But I think Green Bay, they really haven't played behind besides the Lions game, but they still put up. 40-some points, 40-some points, and then 37 against a tough Saints defense. Yeah. So, I mean, they're humming on all cylinders. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing with Minnesota, too. They're, the first two games, they were playing from behind. So, it's hard to keep that run game going like that when you're just playing catch-up. And we don't have the offense of play calling, apparently, or the quarterback to come from behind and make wins like that. But when we play our offense and stick around, like we sh- I feel like that should have been a win last week, but it was just a tough break. Do you think that uh, Diggs being gone is more of a problem than we originally thought? It's definitely a hole. There's definitely a hole there, that's for sure. I mean, I think Jefferson is a good pickup. I mean, sometimes it's more about chemistry than it is about talent, but it's, it's all about getting used to it, too. Like, that no preseason thing, too. You bring in these rookies, and it's hard for them to just get involved right away. It's hard for them to adapt from college to NFL right off the bat. And now we saw Jefferson last week go for 175 yards. That's insane. That's Randy Mossish. Right, and he does have – he's tied for second on the team with receptions with Thielen at 12, and he's got the most reception yards at 245. Yeah. But I think – I believe, and I want to get your opinion on it, does Adam Thielen need to step up more than he did in the past? Is he more of the leader now? See, that's what I th- – everybody wants and that's what we were going through the first two weeks the first two weeks it was push it to feeling force it to feeling and in the first week he got a bunch of good yards and touchdowns in garbage time after the Packers already had had the win in hand and that second week we're just forcing it to him and forcing it to him when we got open receivers all over the place so I think that if we use Jefferson correctly feeling can be a big part of that but we can't just go to feeling we don't have for one the quarterback to do that to make those kind of throws and for two I don't think Thielen can take on all that either he can't take on double teams he's not big he's not fast he's just a good route runner with some hands on him so I think if we can distribute the ball and not put so much pressure on Thielen there's our chances go way up to win right I, I totally agree with you I have a couple more questions we'll let you go I know you're busy there in uh, Vegas living the high life finally <laughs> so it's quiet down a bit oh yeah i know our kids our kids a little off topic here but our kids went back to school a couple of weeks ago and it's been glorious yeah it's a lot quieter that's for sure <laughs> so with Kirk cousins i mean he's thrown for 623 yards but he hasn't been as accurate he's got six interceptions he only thrown five touchdowns yep now would you say or do you think that it's part of the offensive line's problem? He's been sacked seven times. Do you think he's not getting enough time back there? Or is he just making rash decisions and trying to throw at the feeling and he's not getting other people open? I feel like the offensive line has been a problem for years that for some reason just never gets fixed. We, we got Ezra Cleveland in the second round. He's supposed to be a good pass protector. I don't know why he's not playing. He's a little smaller. He's a little too thin, I think, but – yeah, we got we can we can block for the run, but for some reason it's just one dimensional that way. Where it comes to the pass, it's a lot harder for those offensive linemen that we kind of like band aid in sometimes to just keep them covered, especially in crunch time. Cousins only threw six picks last year, a whole year. Now this year he's already got six picks through three. 
And then a lot of that is like the first, like I was saying before, was forcing it to Thielen, becoming predictable, staring down his receivers. He's not playing the corners at all. He's just finding his receiver and throwing it and hoping for the best. And in the NFL, that's never going to work. <laughs> no, guys are too fast. No, too smart, too fast, exactly. Well, I mean, he's, he's then, averaging you know, 223 a game, almost 224. I mean, it's not bad, but in this day of NFL, people are averaging 290, 270, you know, 270, 290, 300. You look at yeah. Mahomes last night going off. Jesus or getting five touchdowns and everything like that. And he out- I picked the Ravens to win that game. I figured, well, it was in Baltimore. They play them tough in Kansas City. Figure, hey, we'll go to Baltimore. They'll get a win. Mahomes said, nah, we're not having yeah. that. That's that's why I win $50 gambling and you don't. Because the Chiefs were – Patrick Mahomes wasn't letting that go on prime time. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I, I – I'm I'm pretty – like, when I bet people, I'm really good. But when I make picks – on my own, sometime I'm like, yeah, why would you do that? But I don't know. I feel you. I'm not rich. I just got to take my small little victories, especially with the Vikings this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got a tough, tough uh, road here ahead. I mean, in, yeah, the schedule doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. No, you got Green Bay coming up again on November 1st, and that's in Lambeau this time. It's going to be yeah. cold. Obviously, playing at Dome, but you, Minnesota's cold, but outdoors. And that cold weather is a lot different than playing in a dome, which is 70 degrees. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the only real home, home fan event, advantage this year is if you're a cold weather team. Because there's not going to be the fans there screaming the place up where you can't talk to your offensive line. But if you're not used to that cold, that's going to be a problem. Right. So, uh, we might have a couple more questions for you. Because we want to look at the defense. You said the defense is probably most of your problem. So yep. you got Smith with, yeah, yeah, they let up a lot of points, and it, that could be a lack of uh, defensive line help. That could also be because the secondary is so young. You have a veteran in Smith, both, but he's got one interception. Wilson, the linebacker, has got one interception. And yeah, he looks good in plates of bar. I was, I was kind of happy with him. You know, Kendricks looks all right. In Jaku or whatever, I'll, one day I'll get it before the end of the season. Right, exactly. He's looking good. Smith is always, you know, going to do his B stuff. Harris, he's, he's around. He's flying around the field. It's just those young secondaries, especially on deep routes. If it's one-on-one coverage, it's just not, not working out for them. They're getting burnt. There was four plays, three or four plays against Tennessee. First play of the game, right down the field on Halton Hill, 40-some yard pass. That's instantly – putting it takes you know the confidence out of their heads too Dang, right away huh after being suspect the whole first two weeks it's hard to recover especially when you're young like that yeah because they only have two interceptions and that's not going to get it done in the nfl you have to force turnovers and if you're not going to be able to force yeah. turnovers it's going to make your offense work a lot harder so they got some work to do for sure yeah the last question i have for you now, they play Houston coming up this week. Now, reports are coming out that the Titans, three players on the Titans team, have tested positive for COVID-19. I do not know the well, results just... of the Vikings. Do you know the results of the Vikings? I got nothing yet. So far, nothing. But I heard it's now seven on the Titans. Oh, okay. So, and now okay. this is just more days where we can't practice, which is – Well, they shut down yeah, the whole no. week is what I heard. So what, what is that going to do for well, game planning – an execution coming up Sunday. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's not going to help. <laughs> Those young guys need all the time on that field as they can get. And, you know, they're, they are getting better, but they're just still not up to NFL elite cornerback level. Not even elite, just, like, good enough. And, you know, without practice, without being on that field, it's going to be hard to learn. You can only do so many Zoom meetings, and so many freaking reading the playbooks, and, studying before you got to get smashed in the mouth sometimes. Well, great words of encouragement for your Minnesota Vikings. Hopefully yeah. they get a win and we'll come back next week. We can talk about the game right here on the Zoom session. I would, I would appreciate a win. It would be a, be a lot more entertaining in life. Be a hey. lot more smiles. <laughs> Personally, I'm hoping you lose. But that's I, I, I figured. I'm a Packer fan. Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, 
That's okay. Hopefully, I, I think you should beat the Texans, but I don't know because they're zero three. They were picked close to win the South with the Titans, yeah. and now I mean, the Colts are playing well. Yeah, the Houston doesn't look bad either. They don't look good, but they don't look bad. I feel like first two weeks Vikings look bad. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Well, in Houston, you know, in the first game you go to Kansas City. Yeah, that's a tough schedule they had too. Yeah, they they're not giving. <laughs> Pittsburgh breaks. Yep, and then Pittsburgh stuff at home, so. That defense is good, yeah. Exactly. And, you know, Minnesota, I think they'll get there. I think – how long do they have Cousins wrapped up for? Just signed another three-year extension. Oh, Jesus. I feel bad yeah. for you. <laughs> kind of stuck with them now. I mean, there's always a way out, but we do bad enough in this, this season, which I don't want. I'm always going to root for playoffs and get, get that – get that first ring but if we do bad enough I'm I wouldn't be mad if they're looking at a quarterback there's that Trey Lance out there he looks amazing like the future got Trevor I hope we're not that bad to go number one but there's some there's some quarterbacks out there that could change the game a little bit for us so I think we'll have to wait and see though I think there's more quarterbacks than was originally thought yeah there's some really good quarterbacks out there but I think well, college the season's just starting right now, too. You never know who's going to emerge. Nobody saw Burrow come in last year. He just decided, all right, I'm going to take this over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now with the Big Ten starting up in October, October 23rd, 24th, that's going to be huge. I think uh, you're going to really be able to see Field. You're going to be able to see uh, the guy from Minnesota as well. He's a decent quarterback. So I think there's some quality quarterbacks in the Big Ten, and that's going to help college football in general. Oh, definitely. So that's good. Hopefully, um, maybe Minnesota can sign one of these, maybe Fields, from what I've heard. I really like that Trey Lance from North Dakota State. You know, they, they have some good quarterbacks coming out of there. Wentz came out of there, and now he's – Well, he doesn't look good these days. <laughs> you know, it, like you said before, though, with Minnesota, it's probably the same thing in Philadelphia where you got no preseason football – Summer yeah. camp is kind of delayed. Yeah. Like you said, there's only so many Zoom calls you can do without throwing your head through a screen. Yeah. You know, you got to get out there and put in the work to get better. And they're not... maybe after week four, it'll start coming up. We'll have to see. Only time will tell. Yep. Yeah, it's still early, but, I mean, we only got so much time to, to figure it out before the season gets out of your grasp, you know. Exactly. Well, we look forward to talking to you next week right here on Scotty T Sports Experience Zoom call session with the insider, Mike. Thanks, Scott.